Hello, this is a talk called How to Commit to Apache Loop. My name is Steve Lochran, Steve L at Apache.org. I am a Hadoop committer, I've been for a number of years, and I work at Organize. This talk is very much targeted at new committers to Hadoop to say this is how we work, or at least some of the concepts of how we work, and certainly how I do things. But it should also be relevant to anybody that wonders how code actually gets into Hadoop as part of the Hadoop development process. Key thing to know is Hadoop is an open source project. All development happens in the open. And we try, we strive to absolutely maintain and improve the quality of code through period. Now that Hadoop is being used across industries from web to enterprises, classic enterprises, it's becoming more and more important that Hadoop it stays good, that even though as we add new features and evolve it, the bits that everyone utterly depends on stay utterly dependable. Absolutely critical, for example, is the file system, that it will store petabytes of data, that that data will still be there, readable, when you want to get back at it later. Also critical is the performance of the execution layer, yarn, map produce. You want to make things faster and not slower. You make things slower, you impact the user experience, you may increase the need to buy more machines to maintain current performance. Uh, whereas making things faster, everybody's happy. All things have to work at scale as well. It's not enough to say, I have a patch that works really well on my four day cluster. I have a patch that works really well on a machine with a gigabyte of RAM. What you need to think about is, code that works well on many core machines, not just Intel boxes, but you have to think about things like ARM systems as well, Linux and Windows. You've got to think about how this works in a thousand node cluster where the central manager nodes are receiving requests and handling connections from all those thousands of machines and lots of incoming load from that side. So scale, ability to function under scale are absolutely important. And the way to do that is not just to sit from the beginning and learn about all these problems as you go along, but rely on the opinions of people that have worked in that area before. A lot of my colleagues came at Yahoo. They've been doing this since day one of the Hadoop code base. They understand the issues and the problems. And people like that are the best people to provide input on what happens. So I'm demoing a patch that affect the Hadoop file system. I'll be relying on one of my my colleagues to help me, Suresh, and he he's the one that really keeps track of all the deep file system changes. Now at this point people are probably saying, ah, oh, it's a colleague, Suresh will show bias towards me and get something in, but if you have a look at some of the big patches I worked on recently, like Hadoop 8545, you'll see that actually all of us, we can get, we have to depend on peer review by others, and it does always take time. Because everyone, if there's a big lump of code that needs a lot of detailed review and design review, those other people are busy. And it does, you know, it does place a limit on some of the scalability and agility of a big project, which is why we're moving more towards branches and separate branches development, but we still need to get those big patches back in. It's somewhat ironic then that we have a scale problem inside the loop, but really it's the problem of maintaining maintaining the code while still scaling up. A good solution just is to let's break things out more, which is the way things are going with the item that produced. But also we need to do more stuff on the side and downstream as well. Anyway, peer review. By the experts understand it. Anyone who's interested in the project can review code, can, can, can say plus one I like it, minus one I don't. Committers are the ones that when they say plus one they'll say yes you can put this in. You're not allowed to vote for yourself. But if you're a committer, you should review other people's work too, whether they're committers, whether they're not committers, in the area that you understand. It's important not to cause damage to the code base by accepting things in the area you don't know about. You will not make friends that way. 
all the discussion takes place on Jira, the issues that are patched with all, and the patches go there as well too. We discuss everything in Jira because that's the way that we preserve the history of what went on alongside the patch itself. That's good for the history tracking. It's slightly dangerous in that you don't always see what changes are happening, which puts no conflict with you. That's why it's the duty of some people, like Suresh, to keep track of everything in their head. As you, an individual, when you, it's nice to subscribe to and track what issues come into development lists and hit the track button on the Jira if it's something that you think might be relevant. Then, later on, while you're doing tests or whatever, have a quick look through those Jiras and changes and see what's happened. You submit the patches in Jira 2. There's a Jenkins server that automatically runs those patches and tells you whether they work against trunk for, for patching, applying and testing. And then after you, you apply the patches and then you modify, you record them not just in Jira, but in changes.txt, so there's a, there's a single file summary of what's going on. So there's the core concepts. The workflow, we're about to go through. Use SPN to update it, you download the patch, apply it, update changes, commit. If you're going across branches, you have to merge it across, and then finally update Jira. All patches, unless it's utterly impossible, go into trunk. That is where all new features should go, all new development should go. It's where people work. There is usually one or two production branches behind that. Currently, branch two is where most development is going on. Branch one is still being maintained for, for bug fixes and the odd backporting feature. But everything goes in the deep trunk. You may want to backport it into the earlier versions. The further you backport something from the trunk, the harder it gets to do. Generally, it's bug fixes that go back in, apart from some really interesting features. So, work with trunk would be a recommendation. Test with trunk too. If you want to backport it, you'd better test that as well. It's noticeable that Jenkins does not test against anything other than trunk, so you have to do that by hand. Now, let's find a patch. Let's find a Jira for the patch. Here we have Hadoop 9991. It's worth noting that syntax crops up a lot in discussions where someone just says, oh well, I'm going to apply Hadoop 9991 here. That is an implicit reference to a Hadoop issue under issues of patch building. Anything with Hadoop dash at the bottom refers to Hadoop common. If it's HDFS dash, then it's a HDFS issue, yarn dash, and MapReduce dash, etc. They're often quite interconnected. And other Apache projects that are run in Jira could be linked in quite nicely too. This patch, for example, refers to Apache Bookkeeper as a related bug. It shows you that Hadoop, there is more than just the Hadoop code base. Often the H base people say, hang on, we've got a problem, can we work together and fix it? And it's a zookeeper, there's a cumulative, there's lots of things going on. It. And collaboration across the Hadoop projects and Hadoop stack, including some of the projects that are very close to Hadoop but not actually inside the Apache code base, is how we work together and improve quality. Yes, they are slightly decoupled projects but it doesn't mean we can't actually fix things on behalf of the others. So, here is an issue created by me back in September saying, we have to improve the Hadoop POM, the dependency metadata in the build files to say, let's export less junk to downstream projects. Let's be more up to date with our dependencies. I'm having this problem with a project working on called Hoya, which is based on Yarn where it's putting in Hadoop 2, HBase and Cumula, and there are, there's a lot of conflict there in versions. So this says, fix up the releases and go up to them. That's actually quite a big project, and we have to do it step by step, binary by binary, jar by jar, just to make sure that no single change, we can really isolate what's going on and what's going to happen, which is why I've created lots of sub-projects and different bits of work here. So, we're going to pick one of them. So it's a nice simple one here. Heavy 10147. Let's put this. 
This is actually filed by somebody else, Eric. But it relates to that same issue of let's update Hadoop and its dependencies. What it says is the commons logging 1.1.1, that's Apache commons logging, has a deadlock, a rec condition, which we can fix by moving to Hadoop 1.1.2 or later. So it, it is another com dependency patch. It shows up in HDFS, which is interesting, but the patch goes into Hadoop common. So, what I got from Eric was code with stack traces. Stack traces are very, very useful. We'll discuss what's going on. I've written a patch and submitted it. Jenkins had a look at it and says, well, this is all really good. Everything still works test-wise, but you have not written any tests, so it's going to veto it. But it does. Please justify why, why tests aren't available or what you did by hand. We prefer automated tests because we, we can regression test on them if it's a very obscure problem related to a specific machine or network then we can't just do them so some manual verification is good here we are in a, a situation where we have intermittent race conditions that will, that will show up in tests but nowhere else we clearly don't see them in Jenkins with a deadlocked so we're just going to have to say we can't replicate this at all but given that I did Apache Commons logging 1.1.2 onwards has the fixing, we're confident that that at least will, will fix this problem. So, going to Commons logging, but it actually fixed the problem in HDFS, so I've actually created an HDFS Jira to flag up the same problem, say there's a deadlock caused by logging, and I stuck the same patch file in. That lets people know what's going on, it's related to it, it's been incorporated in it, same Jenkins result. And Suresh has had a look at it and says, yes, go for it. I'm actually going to apply the patch to Commons, but just letting the HDFS people know what's going on stops things, stops us breaking things by putting stuff in that they don't know about. Anyway, the patch is good to go. So what I'm going to do is actually download the patch I created myself and save it into a directory incoming. There's the patch. Even if, as in this case, I'm created the patch myself, I am not going to apply a copy I've got around to hand and merge it in. We're not playing games with Git and merging branches in. And, it, and the reason I'm deliberately pulling in the patch file and applying it myself is it means I can be 100% confident that I'm applying exactly the one that I showed to everybody else that Jenkins went through that people read. So I've saved that file. Not what we do here. It says, I download the patch and I apply it. If you git apply. We've got a white space patch here at the end, just in case I need to. Now, this patch is going to go into branch 2 and branch 1. Sorry, and trunk. So, as I said before, everything goes with trunk, sometimes branch 2. I'm actually going to apply it to branch, branch 2 and then push it forward. The reason for that is purely because it actually makes it easier to do a merge including changes that text. So first, in my branch 2 directory, let's go update. There shouldn't be any changes. I work in the UK, so during my working hours is actually this relatively low rate of change compared to in the US time zone. It means I can do things without banging into race condition guys, but I still need to check let's get enough of it. Let's go. Alright, it's good to go. So let's apply the patch here. I wrote this patch back in December. Is that right? Yeah, 6th of December. Oh patch came in the 18th which is now a few weeks ago. There is a risk that since then the code may have changed and the patch may not apply. We're going to find out. But it's a reason why you want patches to go in fast. So, minus fix. So, patches. Okay. 
But there we go. Even though we're an SVN, you can actually use Git Apply. The reason for that is one, it can do that white space fix up as you go along. Two, it is actually stricter than patch. If it doesn't work, I will actually call back to patch, but I like to use Git Apply first. Let's see. Yeah, I did it. Okay, an SVN status now. There we go. There we go, it's gone in nice and happily. So that, that's the core bit of code there that's ready to go. What I also have to do is edit changes.txt. So let's find that code, find open. No. Let's go. Branch two, then not break things. Edit column project. Edit column. This is the new change log for branch 2. If it's not, here's the incompatible stuff, giving you features here and here. I'm not quite sure why that's marked the incompatible, if it's not a new feature. I'll fix that in a second. Alright, so improvements and then finally bug fixes. I'm going to put this into a bug fix down here. So it's a deep from 10147. Now, alongside the patch code, I also have maybe the window here. I'm going to build up that text message as I go along, okay? And then I'm actually going to be using that same text message in the the text, as well as. The SDN messages. Okay, so there we go. That is the core text message. I can change the text. Make sure we're fixing the right version. Yep, two point four. As usual, even in changes dot text. Tabs are forbidden, spaces are the only thing for now. And we like to paint things below eight characters, so that's what I'm going to do. Make sure that's still tabs. I guess the extra fields are still tabs. So, there's the patch in there, Hadoop 10147, update commas logging, and Steve L, the person who committed it, if it was done by somebody else. Right here, Timothy Sinclair, via Steve L. Just to say, who did the work, who gets the blame. We also update on Jira who actually did a patch, and we assign it to whoever actually wrote the patch that went in. That's how we track who's been submitting lots of work that is eligible to become a committer. We, we do like to keep in mind who's up, who's up there, who's been doing lots of good work, and say, hey, why don't you become a committer? which is a way of recognizing what they've done and also gives them more than a bit of stretch with other people's code. So that's why you always try to sign things. No. That's gone in there, we're going to save that file. Let's do a check again. Change the text is in there too. Right then, so let's build up the commit message here. On that same bit of text we had before. Okay. That is that piece of code there. So I did 10147. I'm actually going to put HDFS 5678 in there as well. HDFS 5678 in there for Upgrade from this login. I actually think about it, I might put that into the original one as well. Just so that people can correlate it with what actually happened. Mm. 
we did say that. So we got a patch in there, we've got to come up there, see if we can do it. That's now been committed. That patch has gone into branch two. Like I said, you don't do things into branch two unless you put them into trunk. So we have to do that immediately. Let's go on that thing. Make sure this is up to date now. Go back to here. One five five four eight eight two is it? Okay. This is where we're going to merge it in. We're going to apply the patches between one five five four eight eight one, one five five four eight eight two. Giving a different branch of subversion, giving the branch to an end to So this is what we're going to do to merge it in. There is no wiki page how to commit. On the Hadoop wiki, this gives you the, the way to do this. The key point is, is that that was the last revision we're at. This was the revision we're at before. And we'll do a revision mode. Notice that we're using HTTPS, not HTTP subversion. That's, as a committer, you get to use the HTTPS link for all your commits. Anyway, here we go. Let's get this branch. Let's copy it. Back to the trunk. Hit that paste button. See what happens here. The nice thing about the forward porting is that the changes.txt thing goes in exactly where you want it to go. Status. So SDN status says we've actually updated the metadata of the merge going in. We've also updated the code. Let's have a look at the diff there. See what's happening. SDN diff. There we go. This works because it's a nice, clean, simple merge. If you've done, if there's been a code change so that you can't do such a simple merge plus branches, you put it in trunk. You create a new Jira for the back port. You work on that back port, get it reviewed. Even though Jenkins is not going to like it, you've got to say it works locally. Then, if other people are happy, it will be merged in. Those people can and should be testing too. So there we go. We've done the merge. We're going to apply the same commit. There we go. There we go. So now it's been fixed. Okay. What I'm going to do now is actually mix it up in Jira's. Okay. What I'm going to do here is resolve the issue. I'm going to mark this issue, HFS5678, is actually a duplicate of So, closing is duplicate of the now committed to do 101475. Can we use Jira? Cross references like this automatically get filled in with links and even put a line through them when they're committed, so it's very, very useful to do. Remember to spell them right, one little typo, and end up with links that go between the other random. Notice also that we put the patch names into the commit message. That's critical because that's how Jenkins can keep track of when a patch is actually going in. It'll actually say, it'll be tracking the commits, and it'll actually flag on the Jira issues when something goes in based on that keyword in the commit. It also means when you do an SVN log. Log. We can see what happens here, and it will tell us tell us which issue went for each patch. HFS four nine four seven nine four three four three, etc., etc., etc. So very important. Get those Jira's in. Make sure they are the right Jira's, please. So we close that one's duplicate. Resolve that. Now we go back to 104.17 issue, hit resolve issue, and we actually say fixed. 
and the fixed version is the version of the first version of the Hoop codebase 2.4.0 that actually takes the takes a branch. We don't have to say trunk here, branch three, because that is exact. That's implicit there, because you only ever do changes. Any change that goes to the back of the branch, branch two should also be in trunk. We just say it's going to trunk into branch two, and we know trunk will pick it up. It was my patch, so I say. It was assigned to me, if Eric had actually supplied the patch, I would have assigned it to him. And that's it, it's been fixed in 2.4. So let's resolve that issue. There we go. And now if we go back to the, the Uber Jira, as it's known, the one to activate the other ones up. And there we go. That one has now been marked as done. We are one issue closer. To having all the dependencies fixed. Just one issue, we're still a long way away and it's still slow step by step work, but we are one step closer and over time these things will improve. It's notable that actually all these manual steps of update, patching, and applying are exactly the same for a very small patch as for a very big one. It means the effort to actually getting little minor things over is surprisingly high. But also, those little ones are good ones to patch on, where it's not very big amounts of change and nice and visible, is how how you should get used to the process and practice it, because anything you can do with the one line patch here is exactly the same as you will get on a very, very big patch. And so, that's it. If you're a new committer, welcome to the team. If you're not a committer, you know where Jira is, you know how to submit, submit patches now, you know what we do with them. So write, write features, find bugs, file documentation, add tests wherever you can, submit those patches, and if the people that are experts in that area of the code, the committers say it's good to get in, then the code gets in, and whenever you say it, someone says, I'm running a deep cluster, you can say, well, you're running my code. Thank you for watching all the way to the end of this video.